So my name is Lorraine, and in 1994, I had a near-death experience. I think it's important to go back a little bit to the time where I grew up. I grew up in a, I would call it a dysfunctional home environment. Addiction was, was pretty rampant. And in that home environment, you know, you never really knew what you were coming home to. There was a lot of chaos. So I followed suit and at a very young age, I also got involved with drugs and alcohol. And and did a lot of partying. And when I was 18, a lot of my friends had passed away. It's sort of like the good times turned bad and friends died, drug overdoses, jumping off bridges, really traumatic deaths. And I didn't want to live like that anymore. So I had this friend and her parents were born again Christians. So I was coming home one day and the night before I was partying with my girlfriend and I was feeling pretty hungover. Uh, I was coming home and I could hear somebody calling my name. So I looked up and there were my girlfriend's parents asking me to come up to their apartment. They wanted to speak with me. I got into their apartment and they started to share their extreme concern for their daughter. And they were worried that she was going off the rails. So I had listened to their story and thought it was really ironic because I was only with her the night before doing drugs, right? So anyway, they invited me to go to church with them the following day. And they spoke about this God that loved them and that it was just so comforting and embracing. And there was a part of me that really, really longed for that. I had had a lot of death lately and I wanted something different. So I think I was ready for a change. It was nothing short of a miracle. I was like a whole different person. The drug addiction was gone. The desire for alcohol, all of it was just left in the church. My boyfriend, who later became my husband at that time, was away in Europe finding himself. And he too was very heavily into the partying lifestyle. It took a while, but he got on board with the church and we became very active. We got married and uh, we had two children and we found a new church. We were very active in our church, active in our faith and we became elders in the church. My mother-in-law had called me in December and invited the girls and I to go down to Florida. We had had relatives coming from Europe. They were coming for Christmas. So it was our little escape before the busyness of the season. So I packed up my 13 month old and uh, my three year old and off to Florida we went. We had a fantastic two weeks and uh, it was time to come home. So we were driving home. I remember the weather being really horrific all night long. It was raining, pouring. My mother-in-law was driving and we pulled into a rest center and had a short nap. And I got my second wind and I was ready to bring us home. And I got onto the I-95 to drive home. And I remember there was a car and a tractor trailer in front of me. And I wanted to pass the tractor trailer. So I signaled and I checked my blind spot. And as I pulled over, there were oncoming cars in my lane. So I screamed and I turned the wheel, but lost control of the car. It was front page news. And they had said that I was going about 120 kilometers an hour when the cars collided. So I hit, the vehicles hit. They were both airborne. Her vehicle flipped over and ours landed. I was trapped in the car and the paramedics came and they took my mother-in-law and they took my children from the car and they had to cut me out of the car. So they had the jaws of life and they were working really diligently to get me out of that car. And as I sat there waiting, I started to lose consciousness. I was, my breathing was getting really shallow. And the last thing I remember, one of the paramedics said to the other one, do you want me to go work on the other car? And he said, no, she's DOA. And I remember thinking, DOA? What's DOA? I know DOA. Ah, dead on arrival. Wow, she's dead. This is it. 
the curtains are coming down and this is how I'm going out. I'm, I'm going to die in this car accident. So I remembered, I, I had a really deep faith in God at that time. And, you know, a lot of the stories that you hear about near-death experiences, people find their faith. And in my situation, I actually lost my faith. So I was sitting in the car and I was waiting to die. So I thought, well, how do you prepare to die? Okay, I'll start thinking of my first memory. And I was trying to sort of bring it on. And I thought, oh, it's going to be okay. I'm going to go to heaven and angels are rejoicing and I'm going to go and meet God. This is going to be great. And this voice said to me, no, you're not. There is no God. And you're going to go to the ground and maggots are going to eat your body. And I just remember feeling so dark and desperate. And I called out and I said, God, if, if you're real and if you're there, I sure could use your help right now. And you know, it took me a really long time to be able to talk about my experience because there are no real words to describe what happens when you have a near-death experience. So what happened was, it was like my body opened up like a peanut shell and this brilliant white light just filled my body and the hand reached out and it was really bright and the voice said take my hand and i'll show you heaven so i reached up and as i put my hand up it was like i was lifted up out of my body and i started to transcend into a different being I became enveloped in that light. I wanted to speak, but there were no words, and it became our souls. It was almost like a telepathic communication. We just knew. It was a knowing. I just knew, and I believe it was God that was with me. So there was no body. God didn't have a body. I still had a body up until I reached up, and when I reached up, I transcended the body. I, tr I no longer had a body. I became part of God. And he started to show me things from my life where I had gone off, where I had made mistakes. And I remember feeling such tremendous remorse. And, and the feelings were just so much more than what we would ever feel here on this side. And I remember saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't know. And the unconditional love that I was met with every time. And it was just, it's okay, I love you, I forgive you. The love, the forgiveness was just so comforting and so surreal. And then we started to go up and it was like we were flying through it was a bright light but all around was gray like sort of like out in space and I looked back down and I could see me sitting in the car and I could see all of the traffic and I saw the firefighters and I saw the lady that I had hit her car was flipped over and she had died in the accident so she was flipped over in the car and at that point it wasn't in words Words, but it wasn't as strong as that knowing feeling. And it was just God saying, don't look back. So I continued to look up and we went through this space and then we stopped. And out from the side, there's a scripture verse, it's Isaiah 6, and it says, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And that's kind of how I equate the experience. And out from his train or his gown came a picture of my husband at that time. And I looked at the picture and I realized that that was him. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my husband. And I'm Lorraine. And oh, the kids. And there's been an accident. And the realization of what had happened was hitting me. And at that same time, God was asking me, are you tired? Do you want to come home? 
And I remember being really surprised that I had a choice and I didn't feel ready. As much as the love enveloped me and it was beautiful, I just felt like there was more that needed to be done. So I said, I don't think I'm ready. And it was just, again, that unconditional love. And it was just like, okay. And we started to descend. And we descended back down. And as I came back into my body, the last thing I heard from God, it was like a very firm hold of my hand and a, an audible voice this time said, don't let go of my hand. I'm here. So I held on to the hand. And when I came back into my body, it was like a whoosh, a, a really loud whooshing noise. And my eyes popped. I felt this really like a painful popping in my eyes. And as I looked around, my shirt was off. I had this big collar on my neck and the paramedics were pounding on my chest chest saying we got her she's with us stay with us and when I died in the car they had decided they were going to cut me out of the car and when I came back into my body the roof of the car was off my leg was trapped and everything was on the bone was right through my leg and they had had to lift the roof off cut the roof off and use the jaws of life to extricate me from the car so there was an air ambulance coming in and I went off. They they took me out of the car and they took me to the trauma center. And I remember being in the trauma center in the ICU and, and bells and whistles kept going off. And the lady had told me, I asked her, what is that noise? What are all those bell noises? And she had said that it was people dying all around me people were dying and I remember just having such an urgency to survive it to live and I think my children you know my kids were 12 13 months old and three years old at that time I think the urgency for me was to be with my children so I went back I came back and I actually last week I had my 56th surgery to put me back together. So what I've learned through the entire experience is that there is a God. God is real. And you know, no matter how desperately in the years after my marriage fell apart, it was a very stressful time. It took me two years before I even walked. I went through crutches, canes. You know, the right side of my face has been reconstructed. I lost my teeth. I lost the bone in my face. My pelvis was crushed. I broke my femur in 54 places. My ankle was hanging on by tendons. So I believe that it happened to show me how real God is and to show me how just powerful God is and the love that he has for me. And today my faith is very different. You know, I'm a very different person today, but God doesn't change. God is still there and he's still very real to me. And yeah, I look forward to meeting him again. Hey, fellow NDE fans, we have some exciting things coming up on the other side, but we could really use your help and support to keep going with this channel. Our outreach team works around the clock, making sure to bring you the best NDE stories that we can find. But now we're looking to expand into other countries to get near-death experiences from around the globe. However, we need your help and support to make this happen. This is why we're introducing our YouTube membership program. Get access to exclusive ad-free episodes that haven't been on YouTube. Watch and participate in live Q&As with the guests. Engage directly with us and NDEers. Participate in giveaways and live events. And most importantly, you will ensure our channel's continuous efforts to seek out and uncover these important experiences worldwide. Support us by hitting the Join Now button below. Thank you for your continued viewership and support. Your help will make a difference, and we look forward to building our community together with you.